So this is a, a topic that makes a lot of people uncomfortable, but I know that part of your background is as a sexuality educator. Yeah, you're not going to make me uncomfortable. <laughs> and so I'm sure that you've thought about what happens to uh, couples that are too intensives or too expansives or an expansive and an intensive in their sex lives. Yeah, well, I would, I would expand that a little bit and say any combination of any number of people in their sex lives. Um, because what, uh, what I can really speak to is not so much the interaction in this case, but like how intensives do sex. And the way that we do sex is intensely. Um, we tend to go for a lot of sensation. We tend to go deep in right away. Um, we tend to be willing to play the edges. And we tend to be willing to play further into the edges the further we've played, which is sort of typical of everybody, but it's extra typical of us. Um, and we have fantastic, hot, intense sex a lot of the time. If we lose interest in sex, it's possible for us to completely divert our sexual energy into some other creative pursuit. And so, um, so it, it's helpful to be conscious of the fact that you can choose to bring it back. But... If you're in it, your, your energy is really rich and alive. And um, we are both the people that can stay in bed all morning and the people that can, you know, throw you up against a wall for five minutes for a quickie between whatever. Um, and we are likely to think that both of those things are hot. So we're very creative and um, open-minded when it comes to sexuality. And that can lead to some really fun adventures. When you've got an expansive and an intensive, or expansives in general, tend to be a little more moderate. That doesn't necessarily mean they're not into kink. It doesn't mean they're not into polyamory. It doesn't mean anything about that. Everybody can do all of those things. But expansives, as you would expect, are a little bit more measured and a little bit more about cadence and you know rhythm and you know regularity and ease and flow and it should come naturally and intensives don't seem to be interrupted by anything like that um <laughs> especially at the beginning of a relationship where everybody's got that new relationship energy and they're really high on on the the possibilities intensives are the ones who are you know having sex four times a day and um expensives you know well ease into it and enjoy themselves and enjoy each other, but not in that same super absorbed way. Now, there is the danger of becoming obsessive, which shows up in all parts of intensives lives, but especially when those chem brain chemistry, when those brain chemicals are going, um, it can be a little challenging to remember that there's a world out there and there's stuff you should do and there might be cats to feed or dogs to walk or children to get to school. So, so it's helpful in those cases to kind of set up structures around your life that you can't really get out of so that you have to go back to your daily life and your routine periodically. Um, especially, especially if you're in a really flexible situation, it can be, it can be really tempting to just kind of wander off for six or eight weeks and that can be unsettling, that can be unbalancing. So even though it's really awesome and really fabulous sex and fantastic brain chemistry that's super addictive, it's good to come back and regroup. Yeah. And now when you put an intensive and an expansive together in a sexual relationship, it mm -hmm. seems like the intensive might tend to really push the expansive's boundaries and make them uncomfortable? That could happen, yeah. Um, here's where clear communication, enthusiastic consent, like all of that stuff really, really comes into play because, um, intensives are likely to be really direct. Intensives are often the people who are like, Hey, want to fuck? And that works really well for intensives, not so well for expansives and expansives don't necessarily have an answer as fast. And when they have an answer, they might not be as sure of it. And so it's easy for them to feel like if they don't keep up, the intensive is just going to move on without them. And so it's important for the, the intensive to be able, again, not to shut it down because there's this, 
this idea that intensives have to just mute, come down. And especially in situations of consent, that's really the default, right? If you don't consent to do what I want to do, whoever is saying no is the one who calls the shots. Sure. But in this case, the best thing to do is for the intensive to have a plan B about how am I going to get my needs met while you're figuring out what you need to do. So if I'm the intensive and I'm like all into something and I say, hey, so I'd really like to try thing X, Y, Z. And the expansive is like, I guess. Like to me, that's not enthusiastic consent. And I can't say yes to that. Like that, I'm no longer interested if that's the yes. So what I say, I would say instead is, okay, well, it sounds like you're maybe not sure. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. I'm happy to negotiate, you know, redefine the parameters. But if you just need space and time to think, I'm going to go over here and do some really hot thing with myself and give you a chance to really be with yourself, get a sense of your, your own centeredness and figure out what you need to do. Now, that can be really hard on the intensive, but it's way easier than just lying there and like drumming your fingers and waiting for someone to make a decision. And it's way less pressure on them. So creating that space where your needs are still getting met. If you're hot, you're getting off. And they have the opportunity to make the decision that they need to make at the pace they need to make it. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So do you talk about this in the book? I don't talk this much in detail about it. So the book is already 70,000 words or 200 pages long. Um, and if my editor really hacks it down, I might be able to stick some of this in there. But this is material, A, this is material that I think is really much more alive in a workshop setting. So I'll be offering workshops that are specific, you know, intensives in sex, sexuality and relationships and intensives in the workplace and intensives with kids. Like I, I'm going to be offering workshops like that. But also, um, but also I think I'll, I'll probably do a lot more talking about it, either audio or video, podcast interviews. I'm not sure exactly what yet. Um, because, because it's not... It's not like there's one question and one answer. It's it's much more alive than that, especially when it comes to things like sexuality and consent, which are so important and so nuanced. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So if people want to hear about these things, then the place to look would be yourenottoomuch.com? Yourenottoomuch.com. Come on over. And you can also contact me directly. I talk about this stuff all the time. I talk about it on Facebook. I answer questions. I have lots of private messaging conversations. And of course, if people want to hire me for private coaching or consulting or bring me and have me do an event, I'm open to all of those things.